Hey guys, it's Allison here and I am back with the next layout in my Clear the Desk class that I'm taking over um, at Chamel.com. So I'm also playing along with a challenge on the Paper Issues blog, which is to use a large title. So you will see that come into play later. And I'm also trying to work through the photos from my daughter's um, grade 7 grad. And I've got these three of my daughter greeting one of her friends who has just pulled up in this hot red sports car. And um, I kind of liked using them with that pretty bold um, pattern paper in the background. If you've seen my kit, then you know there's a couple of bold patterns. And um, Shamel asks us to pick sort of one bold pattern as our jumping off and um, collate the kit, the rest of the kit from there. And um, I kind of broke the rules because I had a couple of different bold patterns. This was one of them. So um, I wasn't initially going to use the, the bold pattern. I was also going to break the rules and not start with um, the bold pattern first. But then I decided that I would because <laughs> I'm a rules follower. Um, so the photos against it, though, needed a mat. And on the back of one of my cut apart papers um, is this black sort of checked pattern. And I thought that was perfect. It, and, but then it made the photos a bit um, heavy on that paper and the, it felt like the paper needed a frame around it. So um, I picked um, a piece of white cardstock and a piece of black cardstock because I wanted to see you know, what the difference would be and which one would be best. And it was definitely best on the black cardstock. So that's what I did. I just trimmed my pa patterned paper down by a half an inch on each side. So I just have a quarter inch border all the way around. Um, keeps it fairly minimal and not overpowering. So then um, one of my cut apart options is this Dear Lizzie paper with all these Polaroid frames on it. So I chose three in three different colors and I've cut those out and they're going to be stacked um, sort of above and below the photo as you see me doing. And then to um, balance that, I just cut three strips of paper from this really nice sort of tealy green pattern. And um, those are going to go on the opposite side of the photo from the frame. So now it's time for me to get my title in place and I'm starting with this set from one of Chamel's collections and I can't remember which one it came out with. Um, on one side it's white foam thickers and the other side it's black and on the black side was a phrase when in doubt and I thought that would be the perfect beginning for a title and I want to say when in doubt arrive in style. So um, I pull out the two other sets of letters that were in my kit, seeing if I have enough um, of the right letters to spell what I want to spell. And the first set I don't, but this set I almost do. Um, I don't have any N's, so I take a U and put it upside down, and then I only have one E. So I take an F and then chop off the bottom of a Z, and that will make my third um, little branch for my E. So now I'm just gluing them into place. And as I'm gluing them, I'm thinking, mm, I hope this glue doesn't show through. And then I'm thinking, oh, I hope it's it's um, strong enough to hold these because there's a there's like a little sort of groove in the back of the letters. And um, I was hoping that the glue would be dimensional enough to fill that groove and stick it to the paper. Uh, for the most part, it worked. Um, I did have to re-glue the letters for in. And I should have spaced my letters first before gluing them down uh, because now the title is going to be a little bit off center. It's um, over to the left a little bit too much. Um, but I figure I can balance that on that foam thicker sheet are some shapes and there's a few hearts. So in my head, I think I can balance it by putting one of the large black hearts on the right of the title down at the bottom there and that, that should um, balance it to your eye. So I've gone through the wood veneer shape um, set and I pulled out three round shapes. Two have hot pink on them and one does not but I figure I can maybe try and pull some hot pink accents in 
later on. Uh, so before I fill up my page with embellishments, I'd better get my journaling in. And since that's the one square that doesn't have anything in it yet, I figure that's perfect to fit all my journaling in. Okay, so um, I'm just checking that all the glue is stuck and it is, and which is perfect. So now I'm going to see about balancing that um, title. Oh yeah, the little bit of the E that I had to um, fix fell off. So <laughs> I had to re-glue that. So you see how I've put the red, the, uh, the red, the black heart down at the bottom there. And it brings that black because the, the when in doubt part is quite uh, visually heavy. So it brings that down to the bottom of the page. And then I've got to balance it um, a few more black accents. So I put another foam heart at the top and then that black speech bubble. There are little black word strips on the puffy sticker sheet that's just laying there on my desk and I will add a few of those. Right now I'm just going through the chipboard set, pulling out a few. I think I have a little pink heart and oh, a little um, arrow bit that says OMG because I sort of feel that's appropriate for a page with a bunch of 13 year olds on it. And I decide that I want to stitch those two buttons onto the page. Now the third round shape is not a button, it's just a round shape with a flower on it, I think. Um, so I can't stitch that one on. So I'm already thinking ahead, um, how am I going to uh, include the same twine in that area? Uh, but for now, I'm just getting some twine so that I can stitch these buttons on. And I wanted plain black twine, but I can't seem to find it. So it probably means that one of my daughters has taken off with it. But I do have a black and white striped baker's twine. So I figure, well, that'll work. It'll actually relate to the letters down at the bottom, which have sort of a black hatch on clear plastic. So now I am just trying to sew the button on. And for some reason, I forget how to sew for this one button. So it takes me... Um, much longer than it should have to figure things out. Um, and I'm going across the sort of middle between the two holes a couple of times to give it some bulk because uh, especially for the large button up at the top, it's quite large. So if I only had one piece of the twine in the middle, I think it would be look a little bit skimpy. And my fingers are not working super well today and I have a lot of trouble making bows for some reason. Um, so now I'm looking down at that third round shape thinking I really need to put something there. So I decide to poke a hole and um, have the twine come up from the bottom and tie a bow in there. It's not through a button or anything like that but um, it, it will be a matching bow. So I have it so I have a knot at the back, but I want to make sure that the knot doesn't get pulled through. So I'm just grabbing some washi tape and I will um, put washi tape over that knot just to keep it in place. Uh, so my layout is almost finished. I just need a couple of little accent pieces and I'm gluing the chipboard down just to make sure that it stays and get a couple more of those little word strips on there. And then as a finishing touch, I add some gold mist because everything needs a little bit of gold mist. Oh, and then I add one more little puffy heart, which you will see in the close-ups here um, has moved position. When I took the first picture, I looked at it in my camera and I realized that the little black heart um, where I had originally placed it was pulling the balance out of alignment. So I moved it up a little bit and it helps keep the layout looking quite balanced. All right, so that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back soon with more. Bye-bye.